I think I want to call this video walking into rock bottom. And it's not, but what I find funny about rock bottom is, is, pardon the pun, you know, God deliberately makes it happen. Blows my mind. Anyway, um, and like I've got to the point where it's just like, you know, existence itself is just mediocrity. It is just the most average experience you could ever want. You know, hope for or wish for. Like that's what I'm saying. It's just not there. It's just waking up to another another day, another disappointment. And that's without being depressed. That's a, God allows it. That's what I'm saying. God is sadistic in one sense. Oh, it's all out. I, I, I struggle. There's a point to this, so don't be concerned. But I struggle. Um, this was my will for you before the foundations of the earth. What, so your will for us was to struggle. It flips me out. Because um, <clears throat> there's more to this than first meets the eye. You know, God is good. It's just I've just had my faith tested to the brink of its existence recently and um i've hit the end of the road of it and i hit the end of the road of it today and um see i didn't realize that god placed me into a jezebel pit and um the conflict with the jezebels was gradually increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing and increasing and um I had all my core wounds come out over the past few days. Um, I, it was exposed. I didn't even know I had a real enemy. I had a real enemy, and they have destroyed my name around a community. Um, they've been belittling us, um, sticking their nose in my business. And ultimately, that's where this all came together this morning, because I like to take notes of things and, you know, just for further... To be able to come back and take a look at it on a later date. And as I was standing there this morning, because like I've had a few things. I, I, I had a dog. I've got a dog, a pup. And, you know, like, hardest nut you'll ever crack when it comes to walking on a lead. I've broken some dogs and I've had a lot of dogs, but this one here, most stubborn breed I've ever come across. So there's that. And then there is, I, I honestly in regards to what we call kingdom marriages i don't even know who mine is i just fit you know it's just like for me I, i'd hate to say it again god just say god's not lying but every deception that i receive oh it's just a test it's just like there's always i'm not at fault here you're the one that needs to catch up and i get that i've got to catch up i get that the spirit's moving and all the rest so i just i'm at that point right now where it's just like you're in faith you're waiting and it's just like, oh, it's a test. It's another test. It's another test. It's about like, how about you go fuck yourself? I'm done with the tests. It, it's something else. But like, obviously, you just keep walking it out because, you know, you're like, well, this mediocrity has to get us somewhere. So, um, like, I, you know, I fasted yesterday for whatever mediocre reason so I could experience more mundane garbage. Right? There's a point to this. So, as I'm... Uh, what was it, Friday night. So Friday night, uh, it, it was all last week, I came to discover the core root of, because I've been locked up twice and it wasn't my fault, but I got locked up and there was a specific tangible reason for it behind the people that did it. Because I nearly died. And... Um, Biggest issue I had was the women in my life. But beyond that, I needed to figure out what the greater problem was. So, like, obviously, you have to learn. you got to stop standing up for others. Everyone has to learn to stand up for themselves. Um, and you would think that we're here to you know, stand up for the little man without a voice, but that little man without a voice will be the first one to completely crucify it. So you're like, well, you got to figure out that it's all right to let people suffer, and you got to get good at letting it happen because... Everyone's got to learn to stand up for themselves. We've all got to figure it out on our own. Um, so there's that. And then also you need to pick your fights. And so the ones that I picked for, like I tried to make a stand back when I did, but I just didn't have what it would take, what it took to be able to 
withstand the storm that came from what I was standing up against. And so I didn't realize that, well, no, I don't think many of us realized until a couple of this last 12 months just how prevalent the narcissistic creature is. But it's beyond the narcissistic creature, and that's what I want to sort of talk about with this video. So Friday night I was explaining to someone through intricate detail, going back through all the facts, because I'd put a case together over what has destroyed my life for the past 15 years. And I've, I have found the door and I've managed to walk out of it, but that was without one of these Jezebel spirits coming through them to try and attack me one more time in order to try and drag us back into that pit of dog shit, which is just the cesspool of humanity. But if I walk through it, it was a major wound that got opened up out of what took place, which is what it is, but I've been able to understand. It took me an hour and a half to figure it out instead of 10 years. So we got a good start. And with that, so I've got two things I want to talk about here. First of all, I found peace out of the fact that what this individual did was actually what the, all women in my life have done. And so I had to go back and try and figure out, because I, I am not proud of anything. You know, and I've done some massive accomplishments, but they're just dust collectors. And it's just it's eroded my ability to even just be happy. I've just, I would have to be one of the most accomplished, unhappy individuals you'll ever come across, because life just has no meaning for me, because it's just this 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 and you'll see it here in a bit so i'll read what i wrote down about it and then from there um we'll get back to what i want to speak about so the negative impact of revenge thinking both in business and life i'll stand up and read it People who are taking silly risks and doubling and tripling up or trading or taking life from a mindset or position of revenge are not in control of their situation. Far from it if they are emotionally driven and they are and they create an environment that quashes their ability to think and to play the game of life objectively, they are no longer assessing their risks. Sense Endlessly risking more after losing anything in life is the first sign that a person is no longer losing only their money and dignity, but also losing the most important battle of all, the battle of their mind. I.e., oh, so these are seriously dangerous grounds because there is now a shift from a proactive approach towards a situation in control of one's life to a reactive approach out of control, both in action and mind, and a move from order into chaos. So we're dealing with chaotic humans, right? I.e., they've lost their mind and have become senseless. This explains the fundamental core of envious and jealous behavior and the notion of being a sore loser. They're out of control and using revengeful tactics to try and regain the control. This will come back to what I wanted to talk about originally. So, the person then begins to feel as if, though, life itself owes them something. The reality is that it does not. Winning and losing is never personal. It is just a feedback based upon your actions. That set me free from my core wound. Winning and losing, because life is about winners and losers, and you've got to get beyond sore losers. When you can become objective, you know, we're talking about use your mind or your guts, when you can understand that we must be emotionally detached when it comes to specific things in our life that we do find ourselves having issues with, winning and losing is not personal. It is quite simply a response to our own actions in regards to the situation where there are no winners and losers. It's just it was the response to the situation. So we'll get to more of it. It allows us to become objective. So nothing with anyone is ever personal. If the person is dismissive towards you, this is not personal. It's simply who they are in response, stroke reaction to something. All right. This is why exterior validation is flawed. Unless the person is of a sound mind at the top of their game and have the results that you are looking for, 
They have no place sticking their nose in your business. All you are ever doing by allowing this is feeding their sense of self-importance whilst they destroy yours. Don't. So again, unless the person of a set is of a sound mind at the top of their game and have the results that you are looking for, stop opening up to them. This is how you protect yourself. So it turns out my great core problem, which why I have cut off, I just don't even like women anymore, to be honest with you. I'm not gay. I just, women equal trouble. And I was like, what are they equal trouble? They're dismissive. And being dismissive is the most repulsive, disrespectful, pompous, nose down looking, vile thing you can be towards another human. All right. And that dismissiveness, where they think they've become high-minded out of it, what they've actually done is expose the truth, which is they're fucking ignorant. All right? So, you know what I was saying? 11.11 on the ah, video. So the person then begins to feel as though life itself owes them something, but the reality is that it does not. Winning or losing is never personal. It is simply feedback based upon actions. We have to be discerning who we open up to. That's for the chosen ones. We have to be discerning. Um, and we have to stop having wishful thinking and we have to stop thinking that there's something there when there's just something not there. But the long and short of it is, if, you see, these dismissive individuals, that's why I got divorced, this is why I cut my family off. Dismissive. 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 Nose down looking, pompous, jealous, greedy, you know, uh, manipulative. And then we want to get into what that all means. I'll get to that there in a bit. But the reason why I had to cut it off is because that's what locked me up. Now, the reason why I got locked up, it actually turns out, is because I was standing up for people. And the person that I was standing up for, and as much as they enjoyed the fact that I was doing it, they then turned me into their scapegoat and everyone got on with their life and I was left with a big fat mess to clean up. So this has kept happening. So I've had to learn to just, you know, keep my nose clean. It's, you know, you want to say like self-preservation, forget self-preservation. It's just, you know, we've all got to learn to do it on our own. Yeah. So I've had to really stand back and just, you know, focus on making my best version of me because uh, again and again and again and again, we don't live in a receptive society where people want to learn and I, I, I'm what 37 now and I am very intelligent and I really am at the top of my game and I really do function amongst powerful people what difference have I made in person to anyone fucking nothing because Aussies English people the people that speak English are the most thick jealous humans they can't learn. They've got fucking learning difficulties. And like, as much as you want to have compassion and be empathetic towards them and try and be patient and work with them, they will be the quickest to send you to the drink if that's what you wanted to do. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do any of that garbage. What I'm trying to get at is just, I've given three years to someone and they will not fucking shift. They'll just sit in the same spot. And that's why I just don't give anything to anyone anymore. And I put a big gap between myself and everyone because unless they are willing to pay for what I'm doing, stay clear. My presence is enough for this life and my prayers. Well, I'm not getting involved with humans unless somehow someone who is willing, eager, willing to learn and eager to actually do something with their life turned on. I just I can't be bothered anymore. Stubborn, rigid, malignant garbage, right? So my core wound was based around a dismissive response that women gave me. And so I've discovered that most women nowadays are dismissive and it's a disgusting, nose down looking, disrespectful thing that they do in order to try and feel a sense of control where the long and short of it is they've exposed themselves to be an ignorant human being. No need to be upset about that. You just move on now because there's no emotional response. You've just got to accept that that's their response to the situation and they're not mature enough to be having that conversation with you. Next, All right, so this morning... As I was thinking about that, because I had a little bit of a blowout about that scenario after it took place, because I needed to try and figure out what the bigger issue was, I was then like, you know, why do I keep feel like I'm hitting rock bottom, hit rotting rock, hitting rock bottom, hit rotting rock, rock bottom, because I've hit a brick wall. And it's not that I'm doing anything wrong, God's allowed it. So Dad said, we get our energy from God, the Empress, and then what, 
I, I sometimes feel like there must be one percent of us, and we are like the mother cows for all these ticks, these parasites to try and suck off us. They're energy suckers because they don't have any themselves. They're empty. So discerningly speaking, the moment that I smell parasites, I rip all my energy away from there and then they can just you know, live without the blanket that was placed underneath them in order to be able to keep them a little bit more protected than they needed to be because the long and short of it is they don't fucking deserve what it is that you're bringing to the table. So let's get back to it. So this morning as I'm standing here and I've really got to the point where I'm just like, life's mediocre. Like I could be a fucking poet with just how disappointing things are. Right? And it's like, so what's really going on here? Because like, I didn't realize that I had... I'm trying to build a case here. I guess I need to explain what the case is and then I'll get back to it. So, as I was standing here this morning, because with the fall down, I've had the breakthrough. I've hit the rock bottom, I've hit the brick wall, but I've had the breakthrough because I've hit the brick wall. I got to the point where I'd had enough. I just had enough. I was just like, I can't do this anymore. I'm over it. You sometimes feel like there's corruption within your prayers and you're just like, you know what? I don't fucking care anymore. I'm over it. It is, what is the point to any of it? It is a fruitless fucking exercise. Then, because I'd gone through the explaining of the experiences that I've had over the last couple of weeks, and I was like, fuck, it feels like they're greedy. It feels like they're jealous. It feels like they're manipulative. And then you know, only just this morning, obviously, I took note of this months ago, and I looked up, and I was like, oh, fuck, there it is. I've been getting hammered by the Jezebel spirit, completely unaware of it. And this is something that, you know, again and again and again, we've got to become aware of because I thought I got rid of them all and it turns out I walked into another pit full of them. They're covert narcissists. They've got this big fat mask, but then all of a sudden God will rip the mask off them and their true colours are showed. All right, so... You ready for it? Who are they sniffing out? People who need others to be happy. Greedy... They're greedy, jealous, manipulative. That's the Jezebel spirit. So the Jezebel spirit, that's what you, you'll find is greed, jealousy, manipulative. And you will naturally assess this as you go through what you've been dealing with. It's just, there's a lot of hindsight contemplation about situations that you've gone through when you start to realize that you've had someone acting like a stumbling block in your life until God finally intervenes and then you know, essentially puts them through it. So their objective is to kill, steal, and destroy, and they will rob you to death and suck the and and suck and milk you dry. Essentially, they'll suck the life out of you um, via mind attacks and through people they send into your life. Um, what do they have? An intense, greedy, selfish desire to get whatever they want, mainly attention, the center of attention. They want the limelight. Right? Um, if they get your attention and get you hooked, they can then start reeling you in. Um, their greatest fear, what are they avoiding at all costs though? Self-condemnation. And the problem is when you finally catch them out, they fall into it and it's a bottomless pit of despair that they can't get away from. So when you fight for the win, you take the loss as a sacrifice and place it at the feet of God, forgive the situation and move on. That way it is in God's hands and you no longer have to worry about it. Let me just repeat that again, because then we'll get into the conversation. When you fight for the win, you take the loss as a sacrifice. Let them win. You take the loss as a sacrifice. You walk out the back door and place it at the feet of God. Forgive the situation and move on. That way it is in God's hands and you no longer have to worry about it. When they are trying to get you to retaliate, do not. Forgive it. Place it at the feet of God. Then God has to deal with it because you have surrendered it over to the Almighty. All right, so I didn't realize that I'd had a Jezebel because, uh, you know, they come in both men and women, but it's been men this time. And um, it's been a literal crucifixion. I nearly bled out four times. It's been, you know, I've been doing fencing and barbed wiring and I've just been scratched and cut to death for months. And every single decision that I had to make or take, there was always a stumbling block placed in front of it with some excuse in regards to the situation because the long and short of it is they were looking for any reason to actually get rid of me. And then fortunately around, it was last week, um, they thought they found something to hold one over the top of us with where, you know, I've been, you know, if this was a, a cricket match of some description, I'm 450 runs in. Like, I've had a massive innings and I haven't got out yet. And anyway, I made a simple mistake a few weeks ago, but the mistake I made, I wasn't even aware of it. So I had to be made aware of it. And 
they felt because they made me aware of it, they could then hold it over me. And then they went funny, started to play games, decided to try and ghost me and then put me in a situation where they felt like they had control over my life. The problem they didn't think about, though, is that why would you write me off in regards to any scenario when I will always not just make a comeback, but I may go over and beyond the problem itself. And unfortunately, last week that happened where what they decided to go and take and run my name down with has been rectified or took responsibility for it. So now they're caught in a situation where they no longer have any credibility in what it is they were trying to run their mouth down about because it no longer exists. And not only that, with this little power hand they were trying to play, the other problem they've got is, is I didn't just fix the problem. I found something which has gone completely beyond industry standards. And essentially I've gone to the next level with what it is and I haven't just fixed it. It's a something where I don't know if the individual's pride will be able to cope with just how well I've done the job now, because the long and short of it is it's, you couldn't look down your nose at it. It's actually world-class. So I just didn't realize it took a week of contemplation through understanding greed and jealousy and manipulation. I didn't realize it, that the Jezebel spirit had got into this person and they had a whip up my ass for months. And now God has placed them into judgment and that might, it might be their time. It's done. So where I had felt like I'd come to a, a dead end, like I'm just like, I've been getting harassed by Jezebel's harassed, harassed, harassed. And, um, I am a spiritual warrior and I do stand strong and I've got a very centered, you know, peace and, you know, one of God's weapons to say the least. And I do a very important job and, you know, got the better of me or no, I am not saying I got the better of me. I was just like, I just, I, I feel like, you know, I think God has a button. If God's sitting on the throne, he's got a button next to him. It's called the retard button. And when he presses it, life turns retarded. And that's just where I'm at with it. It just feels like the retard button has been on permanently. And I just got to the point where I was like, I'm not even suicidal. It's just like, how could life get any more mundane than the mediocrity that I've been experiencing? Because it just didn't really make sense. But what had been happening is ultimately... There were Jezebel. That was one of them. This is what's going on. Ultimately, there'd been Jezebels that were up my ass. And um, isn't it funny how that happens, though? This is what they do. So, um... And it takes your mind off everything completely. And I guess that's what was supposed to happen. So let's just, you know, I didn't even want to carry on there, but I'd hit the wall today. I'd finally discovered that it was Jezebel spirits that had been harassing me and hounding me and just, they weren't leaving us alone in my prayers. And actually, I've actually found very potent prayers now, unfortunately for them, which puts them into a very compromising situation where they've got to leave us alone because it's actually no good for them to be coming near us. And it's their fault that it's happened because I was forced to find some way to continue to survive. So I guess that's why God left the retard button on. He's just like, well, we'll empty this one out because you know it's going to hit the end soon. So for me today, it hit the end. Understanding is typically where you hit the wall, where you hit the end, right? And um, I put the answer to the question that I was looking for up on a wall about six months ago, and it just turns out that it's actually this specific individual every single time. So what do they have? An intense, greedy, selfish desire to get whatever it is they want, which is mainly attention. An intense, selfish, greedy desire. Greedy, jealous, manipulative. That's the Jezebel spirit. So I'm going to leave that phone call in this video and everything else because that's perfect just to show you just how bad it's been. Um, once I saw that and uh, once I got to put the stuff together and then uh, once I've had a look over this past week because God has exposed a lot of truth about a lot of things for us about I've been walking in a den of thieves and they're all just getting exposed for what it is right now and it all is what it is. After that, um, 
my bloody dog that I couldn't lead. I bought a harness and, um, you know, I'd given up on the dog. And today I was just like, I'll give it one more try. Anyway, so when you have a neck, they can dig their feet in. You know, put the harness all in, lift the front feet off the ground. I was going to teach him how to walk on, on my two hind feet if I had to. So I was like, I've got to take him to the dog wash and get him cleaned and all the rest of it. Um, but he'll be useless to me when he's that heavy that I can't even lead him. Anyway, so... I think through the excitement of knowing that I had something that was working and as I was walking him, I was just like laughing and then like calling him to us and we broke through the problem that he had. And I don't know, I'm not going to say this is a saying or not. I think the tough of that shell to crack, the sweet of the juice within. I broke the shell, so he's a tough nut to crack, but my goodness, he's just good. Not pulling, not, not, not wanting to move, just walks with you, that's it. So I feel like I don't know. It's like, uh, uh, that's where I wanted to get to at the origin. So that's what I'm saying. I think the Lord's been working with this in this video. The Lion, the Witch, the Wardrobe, you know, Narnia. In the first and in the second, you know, just at that moment, the, God, the Lord works like goats in the bush. So I had a goat in the bush happened also last week as well in regards to the next part of where it is I'm heading with in my life. And, it played out all the way to the point where I was about to sacrifice all of my gear. Then the Lord pops up and I've got this industrial alternate, which actually makes the job a thousand times more easy than what it is I was going to do. So there's a method in the madness. I think God turns on the retard button to bleed us out completely. And I think once all hope is gone and when all the answers begin to surface, it's like you are so severely fucking humbled. You're down here. You're just, you're little. So I think, you know, a part of the mediocrity, a part of the retard button that he's got on, and he just turns it on and leaves it on, is to severely humble the guts out of you so you're little, you're low. And then with that, he's going to overshine you. And then, then it can only be seen without all reasonable and unreasonable doubt that it is God that's working through you. And I've got no doubt. In I mean, I'm, all the glory goes to God, all the big things that I've done. See, when I do a job, no one believes this, but as I'm doing it, the Holy Spirit is guiding everything that I do. God works through me. I'm the first one to say that. And it's always gentle, nudgingly, beautiful, you know, just you know, the way the conversations go. And I always get things done, you know, just, again, within six months, shit that should have taken 10 years. It's just how it happens. But it's because God works through us. So I don't proclaim to be special. I just know that I've got a good ear for listening to what the Almighty wants us to do. Anyway, so there's a little bit of... <laughs> Everything in all of this, <laughs> and I'm going to have to get going now because this Jezebel is going to be into us, and um, this will make this video pointless. But so back to it one more time. Winning and losing is never personal. It's just a feedback of actions. So when we can become objective, we begin to recognize that these Jezebels are out of control. They're running in revenge and chaos, and they believe that life owes them something. Life knows anyone nothing. They're just trying to regain a sense of control, but they're doing it with through a, an intense greed and selfish desire to get whatever it is that they want. So it's just childish, selfish behavior. Swine, you know, cast a pearl not amongst swine. There's your swine. So really big stuff. Um, I had to hit rock bottom to have the breakthrough. The rock bottom, now that I can see through objective reasoning, was to actually make us little so that the law can begin to now shine through us because I've got to the point now where I've lined a load of ducks up and I guess the Lord wants his glory through the ducks that have been lined up. It's just been a very mediocre experience to get to this point where, to be honest with you, I mean, I just I got to the point. It's like every experience that I had to date, it just feels like it's lined you up for a future experience internally. I'd hate to believe that that is the case. I would like to think that there is some sort of divine justice that's going to come now through the battering that I've copped because I have not retaliated. I've responded appropriately. I've stayed in control. But there has to be some pretty severe consequences for how bad it's been. Anyway, so... Let's call this a roadmap for anyone else that's going through things. If you feel like you're at rock bottom, it may not be depression. It may be that the retard button got left on to bring you to the lowest of lows so that your little 
so the breakthroughs can then come through. I hit my wall today. I had to see that it was the Jezebels that made me hit the wall. But now I'm having the breakthroughs. It's like the floodgates are opening up. So probably you know, in hindsight, there's nothing bad about what had happened. But I had to go through it, and it's been a very ordinary experience. Anyway, heads up. Get the optimism, and we'll see what plays out. Have a good day now. Bye.